Hi, welcome to Quilting with Lori. My name is Lori Dickman. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I am going to be starting a journey here on making a kimono jacket using a disappearing black technique. Plus, I am going to dye some of the muslin fabric that I'm going to be using in the black. So, there's a lot of different techniques that I'm going to be teaching during this series of videos. I think it's going to be about a two, maybe a three week series. So, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything. And listen throughout the whole video because there's a number of things that you're going to be learning as I go through each technique. Uh, first of all, today I'm going to show you the fabrics that I'm going to use, uh, the patterns that I'm going to use, and I'm going to teach you the rust dyeing technique that I have done. And I'm going to hopefully get started on uh, the disappearing black technique that I plan to use. It's a strip uh, disappearing black technique, which might be something different. Maybe you've never seen it before. But uh, join me. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So for this project, we're going to need to create uh, fabric, probably three yards of fabric using the disappear disappearing black techniques. Uh, that would be enough to cut to create a kimono jacket and you'll notice up here on this quilt I have uh, pinned a couple of patterns this is the front and the back of the a kimono jacket that I have downloaded from happiestcamper.com I have links below that I'd like you to go out you can check out her website and her YouTube tutorials she has wonderful tutorials on anything sewing it's really a fun a website and she's got a wonderful uh, group of uh, YouTubes as well so make sure you check that all out I'll have links to the blog where she teaches you how to make the kimono but I am going to use this pattern so I'm going to need to make about three yards of fabric using my disappearing black technique and I'm going to rust dye some of those uh, actually it's going to be the muslin that I'm going to rust dye um, if you're only going to make a tote bag or a purse or maybe a vest, maybe you don't need to make quite that much fabric. Uh, maybe you just need a, a yard of fabric that you'll create uh, using the disappearing black technique. But uh, whatever you do, let's have fun. I'm going to start now and show you the fabrics and we'll get going. So I just went shopping in my stash. Um, it's always fun to be able to go shopping in your own stash, right? And I found these fabrics here that I'm going to use to help create my disappearing blacks that I'll use in the kimono jacket. This is the muslin. I cut some muslin into 10 inch squares and I did the rust dyeing technique on these disappearing uh, muslin pieces. So I have a number of them. I think they turned out beautiful. I'm very excited about that. And I'm going to share with you here in just a minute how all of that was done. I did this uh, last night. They, they processed overnight. And um, I'll show you that process of how to stop the oxidation and everything. It's just a really fun technique. And you just never know what you're going to end up with. So this is a uh, part of the fabric that I'm going to be using with these to create my jacket using the disappearing block technique. Okay, so first of all, we need to know the supplies that you'll want to rust dye your muslin fabric. And here is what I, I'm using. I have some aluminum trays. You can get these at the dollar stores or at the party stores. They're just aluminum trays. And uh, that's what I've uh, used to protect everything from um, the rust and so forth. I just purchased a white vinegar, distilled white vinegar at the dollar store. So that's this uh, distilled white vinegar. I have a, a, water, a spray bottle filled with water. I have a spray bottle filled with that vinegar because spraying it on just makes it much easier and, and helpful as you're spraying your um, fabric. I purchased a box of these common nails at Home Depot. Make sure that you get the type of nail that actually rusts. These nails are about two inches long. And um, so that's what I purchased. I also had gathered a bunch of stuff from my junk drawer. And um, a lot of it right now is inside these uh, fabric pieces, which I'm going to show you here in a minute. And this is steel wool. I went to Home Depot and just bought some steel wool. Now, when you're working with this, you do need to be very careful because um, a lot of this steel, it, it just flies around. Um, be very careful um, that you're not breathing it in. What I did, I just took a scissors and I cut strips of it like this and then I unfolded it. And you'll see that here in just a minute when I um, take apart these logs of batik that are uh, fabric that I had just rust dyed. So this is what I'm using, vinegar, water, and I have the vinegar in the spray bottle. Um, I use some steel wool, I use nails and a variety of stuff around the house that I knew would rust. 
I'm putting it all on tray. Definitely use your uh, gloves to protect your hands and uh, keep children away from this, especially from the steel wool. That's really important. And so let's take a look now. I'm going to move a lot of this out of the way. And we're going to take a look at what I've dyed here. In the next clip or two, you're going to see the process of how I did this. But um, let's see if this has dyed enough. Okay, this is not really processed as much as these did. I left these overnight and they had that beautiful rust color. So I think I'm going to let these process longer. But I'll kind of unroll it so you can see what, uh, what I did. I have 10 inch pieces of muslin that I had used. And here is some of the steel wool that I just rolled up into little sort of circles. Got some nails in there. And that piece of fabric, I left it on long enough and it created the most rust, the steel wool. And now I'm going to roll this back up. You want to keep the, the fabric needs to remain moist. So I did a nice spray of water afterward and you'll see all of that in the next clip here in just a second. Let's take a peek at how this one is doing. These have only been rusting for about an hour. So not a whole lot of rust yet. I want this to process for a while. So I think I'll keep this processing for another four or five hours because I want this fabric to match this fabric as close as possible. And then of course, um, I sprayed them down with vinegar and water and kept them in here um, so that they didn't dry out. So they're just in a plastic bag. And uh, that's all I used. I am not at all scientific. Um, I love to create, and so that's what I'm doing. I'm just having fun creating. So let's watch the videos next on how I did each of these steps. So last night before I went to bed, I rolled up some muslin pieces with some items and sprayed them. I got them wet and I sprayed them with vinegar. I rolled them all up and put them in this bag and I was too tired to wait and see what would happen. So they have been rusting for about eight hours right now. So I think there's going to be quite a bit of rust. And I'm going to show you this and then I'm going to actually take you step by step to show you how I did this rusting process. So here they are. We've got quite a bit of rust. So what I used was just a variety of things. I used some steel wool. I found a number of very strange items just in my junk drawer from my toolbox. I threw in some staplers. I don't know if these staples actually, I guess maybe they did kind of rust. So there were a number of items that I put in here. And so here's one piece of muslin and I love it. Now I need to um, stop the oxida oxidation uh, by either using some baking soda or um, some salt water. So I need to accomplish that here shortly as well. And then here it was just a whole bunch of steel wool. I literally cut it apart in strips and it really rusted. So as you can see here, this fabric is completely rusted except for this area here that didn't really touch it. So that's wonderful. I'm excited to work with that. Here's another little log that I rolled up. And for this one, I just used a bunch of nails. These gloves don't stay on me very well, but um, these were just a bunch of nails that I had. I bought a box of them at Home Depot, just inexpensive, common nails, just a box of them. They're a couple of inches long. You gotta make sure you get the kind that will rust because um, there are a number of different nails that won't. So check that out before you purchase them. And here, I've got a wonderful piece here that has rusted. Now this one I've added both nails as well as rolled up circles of steel wool. And um, I think the steel wool actually touched the top fabric more so than this bottom fabric. And here are all the nails that I used. Let's move this to the side. I'm um, doing this on top of a, an aluminum foil sheet and um, I love it. So each of these fabrics turned out a little bit differently. You can see some of the shapes of the nails. I didn't do anything fancy. Um, I just rolled them up 
and <laughs> then I went to bed and left it. So now I'm going to stop the oxidation process. So let's take a look at the process that I use to um, rust dye my fabric. I have pieces of muslin here. I just cut some 10 inch squares of muslin and um, what I'm first going to do is take them to the sink and soak them in water and then wring them out and then bring them back and start loading them with some of this rusty things that I have here. So uh, let me go get those wet, wring them out, and I'll bring them back and you can watch as I load them with some rusty items. Okay, so what I have now are um, wet pieces of muslin. I've got four of them here. And we do need them to uh, stay wet throughout the whole process. So I did wet them at the sink, wrung them out, and now I'm going to just simply start laying my uh, rusted items on here in any fashion you'd like. Um, I think I'm just going to again roll them up into logs as I did my um, process from last night. So on this one I'm simply going to use a variety of household items here. Many of these are nails. And you can see as I'm touching it, um, these are already starting to rust on the fabric. Because I, I just recently used a lot of um, these. I'm going to also place some of these, um, the steel wool in here. And I've taken the steel wool from the container pulled out a bunch and literally just cut across it and created <clears throat> these unusual designs with it. So on this one, that's my plan for this piece right here. Now I have my vinegar in this spray bottle, which makes it easier. So I am going to literally spray Oh wait, I have to get a different nozzle. This nozzle stopped working on me. I'll be right back. Okay, I found a nozzle. It's actually too big for this container, but it still works. <laughs> so I am misting this with vinegar. This is straight vinegar. I purchased the vinegar at the dollar store. I am just getting it soaked with vinegar. I am not putting any science to this. I am just having fun and being creative here. All right, now I'm gonna cover that with another muslin. I'm also going to mist this with more vinegar. And I'm also going to mist it with water to ensure that it stays nice and wet. Oops. Wow, there we go. Okay, then what I think I'd like to do is roll this in a log as I did the other one and let it process. So that one is ready to go. Now let's work on this pair of muslin. So again, they have been soaked at the laundry sink. I've wrung them out, brought them back. And now I'm going to start placing uh, my rusty nails and variety of things. You can just have fun. You can be much more particular about how you lay these things out. You can tie these logs in knots, use rubber bands, string. Um, whatever you do, the more you do with it, the more creative and interesting the design is going to be. But I'm simply going to follow pretty much the same plan I did last night so that my fabric pieces turn out rather similar um, for my jacket that I'll be making because this will be the light fabric that I'll be using in my jacket pattern with the disappearing blocks. So as you can see I've just taken some of this um, our steel wool and I have placed it down on the muslin and I'm going to spray it now with the vinegar. This is straight vinegar. Spraying it with vinegar. That starts the oxidation process. 
And again, use cotton natural fabrics. Now I'm going to place this on top, pressing it down, and I'm going to spray it with some more vinegar. And I'm also going to spray it with water. So as you see, I'm not very scientific, scientific. I am just having fun. All right, there we go. Now, I want the, the fabric needs to stay wet the entire time that it's processing. So now I'm going to roll these up into little logs. And I am going to put these two logs in a plastic bag. while they process. I lost some of my nails. Stick them back in there. <laughs> there we go. And that's just to simply help it so it doesn't dry out. And I will wait a few hours and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so here we are with the muslin pieces of fabric and being neutralized or we're stopping um, the oxidation process. I used salt, so this container, it's just a Tupperware container, it's about 12 by 6 by 2 inches and I've filled it, you know, three-fourths of the way full of water and I've added half a cup to three-fourths of a cup of salt. And first of all, I took those uh, pieces of muslin that you saw a minute ago in the last uh, video clip and I rinse them out in the laundry room sink and then I put each of them in this salt water solution and I'm going to let them um, neutralize here for about 30 minutes or so. Uh, the salt or baking soda will um, neutralize and stop that oxidation process. So I'm just going to let them soak in here for a little bit and um, I just used cool water. Um, it might have started out warm, but it's, it's cool right now. And here are some of the things that I used. Um, as I mentioned earlier, vinegar. And I just got vinegar at the dollar store. I put it in a spray bottle so it was easier to get it on the fabric. I used um, water. So um, I soaked the fabric pieces first. Um, I literally took them to the sink and got them all wet and wrung out the excess water. Then I laid them out and put on these um, various items here that would um, rust. And then I soaked it really good with vinegar. And then I soaked it again really good with um, water. And then I rolled them up. And you can do so many fun things. You can tie knots around things to really get some unusual um, rust designs. Just a couple of other things you need to keep in mind. When you are uh, doing dyeing of any type of fabric, make sure that you're not trying to dye polyester fabric. That is not going to work. Uh, you need a natural fabric. Cottons these muslins, linens, those will dye beautifully, but um, synthetics do not dye properly, so um, I would avoid that. And secondly, when you're working with steel wool, be very careful because there's a lot of dust of these tiny little particles that fly around, so um, keep it away from children, and be careful because it does, it can tend to stick in your skin, so it's important that you use um, gloves when you're working with that steel wool uh, so that it doesn't um, get embedded in your skin. Um, they're just tiny little hairs of steel wool, but that can be a little irritating, so just be very careful and keep all of this away from children. Okay, so here are my fabrics that I'm using, and I'm cutting them up into one and a half inch strips. So I cut um, width of fabric of these two in one and a half inches wide by the width of the fabric, and then I subcut them into five inch strips. Now for my um, muslin, I had originally cut these in 10 inch squares, but because muslin does shrink quite a bit, and I have steamed this with an iron, or pressed it with an iron to dry it, um, it shrunk up about a half an inch. So I would recommend when you cut your muslin squares to obtain two five inch um, strips out of each square lengthwise. Um, maybe cut them 11 inches square so that you have some excess fabric um, because I ended up with uh, five inch strips and then four and a half inch strips, which I will definitely use in another project. Maybe I'll make some more fabric using a four and a half inch square 
and um, make a purse or something. So uh, just a recommendation, uh, maybe cut your muslin in 11 inch squares. So um, here's what I've done. I've cut these into strips and then we're going to put them together and I'll show you that here in just a second. We're going to make pairs of these. So in this um, set for this block, I have one and a half inch wide strips uh, by five inches long and I'm going to sew them together to create a five inch block. So I have five of them. I've got my darker uh, fabric on the outside and my um, rusted fabric muslin on the center. And I'm doing the same over here. I've got my darker fabrics on the outside and my rusted fabric in the center. And so I'm going to make pairs of these. So I'm going to go to the sewing machine and make up at least four of these and uh, then I'll be back so that you can see what that looks like. So here I am at the machine and I'm going to sew these strips together to create five inch blocks. Um, you'll notice that this does curl uh, quite a bit, but um, I'm going to go ahead and put it together and I'll show you what it looks like in just a second. Alright, so these two blocks have been sewn and I am going to press them. Um, I'm going to press to the dark and then I will we'll be back in just a second to show you the next step of this disappearing block. So for this disappearing block method using strips of fabric, I am keeping it really simple. I did start out with five inch strips because I want my squares to be um, smaller. I don't want to have great big huge designs on my body if I'm wearing this as a kimono jacket. So I want the designs to uh, be a little bit smaller. So the one and a half inch strips are great. And I am simply going to I cut these on the diagonal, once on the diagonal. They measure five and a half by five. So that's what mine measure. And you can actually use any size you want. If you want to use a 10 inch square, an eight inch square, whatever you want to do. Uh, that's totally up to you. But um, I used the five inch square and I used five pieces, cut it on the diagonal. Now we can start having fun with this. So let's see, I had just put this together. There's different ways that you can put this together. But uh, here's one way where you can sew this together. And uh, that's a fun block. I think that makes a very interesting block. I think it would make a very interesting block for the jacket. But if you wanted to actually cut these um, on diagonal twice, you could make even more uh, designs. And let me show you that real quick. Okay, so I've taken both of these blocks and I have cut them, to bring this down here farther so it's in the screen for you. I have cut them on the diagonal twice for this instance. So this is another possibility for you if you'd like to try this. So let's take um, these two blocks out and let's put these two here. There's an interesting block that you've got that you can put together. And here's its mirror image right there. So that's something that you could do. Or you could, let's experiment and see what else we can come up with here. Uh, I had something really fun here a moment ago. Here, I think this was it. Oh, I know. Here's what I did. So there is something that you could do. So you have half the block um, in the two different colorways here. Okay, so what I've done now is I've made up two additional blocks. 
um, when one using the gold, one using this burgundy. And um, so I'm starting out by putting these darker ones with the stripes uh, going out that direction. And I'm taking two from each of these blacks of these lighter gold ones. And I'm gonna have fun doing this. So that's um, one block that you could create. And there's just so many ways you could design this. So I encourage you to have fun, start playing, make up four of your uh, blocks, uh, two of one color set, two of the other color set, and then start playing and having fun with them and decide what it is you'd like to use to create your disappearing black, what uh, uh, variation. And you might want to review the last uh, couple clips here just to identify how to do it and which one you actually want to use and then proceed by continuing with creating your blocks and uh, cutting them apart and putting them back together in the design that you choose. A fast way of actually creating the strip sets is obviously just to take your 44 inch or 42 inch long one and a half inch uh, width of fabric and sewing it with the uh, coordinating um, uh, rusted fabric that you've created and just create strip sets like that and then cut the strip sets apart. Maybe you're not going to use 5 inch, maybe you're going to use 10 inch, whatever it is you plan to do, but um, creating st strip sets is a, a much faster way of doing this. But I just wanted to quickly get these little blocks put together for you so you could see how uh, fun it is to put together so many different designs. To point out here, um, for this particular block, what I have decided to do is to press the seam to uh, this inside longer strip. That way all of these uh, seam allowances don't have to fold back on themselves. So I've pressed it toward that uh, long center section there. And you'll notice that every one of these um, little squares that I've created is each triangle is a little bit different size. And that's okay. You're going to square these up. And uh, for these, I think I'm gonna be squaring mine all up to three and a half inches. So um, I'm gonna square them all up before I actually sew them together. Cause right now they're not gonna go together. Uh, some of these are a little bit larger than these inside sections. So, and you're gonna find that as you're putting this together, that is absolutely going to happen. So that definitely once you got them in little squares, square them up and um, identify what size, maybe you should just identify what size is your smallest. It looks like this might be my smallest square. And that's what I will square everything up to and then I will put my blocks together from that point on. So it looks like three and a quarter inch is what I'm gonna be squaring up my little squares to. So. I am going to use a ruler that has a diagonal. Maybe you have a black lock ruler, whatever you have to square up your uh, squares. That's what you'll want to use. And I'm just using, a, I guess this is a six inch um, Omni grid ruler, and I'm gonna square them up to three and a quarter inches. And what I'm gonna do is take this diagonal line and line it up on that diagonal seam right there. So I'm putting it in that point there, and then I am simply going to go around here and trim it away. And again, I'm going to lay this on the diagonal line. And I will trim away this excess. The ruler wants to flip away as I move my rotating mat but there we go so I have a three and a quarter inch square and I will be putting this together now this little guy right here is actually not going to be visible in the uh, completed block when I put it together so because of the added bulk that it creates I might just go ahead and get rid of all of those little ones there So here is the disappearing block that I'm going to use for my project, uh, for my kimono jacket. And it does square up to six inches. I have it pressed, the center seams I've pressed open. It kind of helps with the bulk 
um, and you might have to fiddle around and figure out what works best so that your seam allowances lay flat. There are a lot of seam allowances in this little project here. So um, you might want to uh, start with a larger block as you're, as you're practicing and learning this. Maybe go with a 10 inch block as opposed to a five inch block when we started out with these little squares here. Um, but now I'm going to go ahead and continue and over the next week I'm going to continue making these blocks until I have um, enough to put together three yards of fabric. I also wanted to show you that this is the mirror image. These are the opposite blocks um, or squares that came uh, from what I had cut out earlier. So here is one and here's the other one. So they're mirror images. And I think it will be really fun putting those together next to one another in the fabric. I do want to point out that um, for the second set of squares that I put together, I actually pressed all of the seams open. I think that is going to help it lay much flatter. So um, that's what I would recommend, that you press all of these seams open and get them starched and so forth. And then go ahead and do your diagonal cuts, whether you're just gonna do one diagonal or two, uh, which I did here to create these fun uh, blocks. Whatever design you decide you're going to do, but I think um, with all of the seams that are going to be involved in this block, pressing each of these seam allowances open is going to help you in the end. A couple of things to keep in mind as you're piecing your strip sets together, and you can piece long strip sets together and then cut them apart at five inches or six or whatever size you plan to make. I'm just happy, I happen to be using this size. Um, but as you're uh, doing that, make sure that you have your darker fabrics on the outside of the strip set. Uh, so you're using three darks in each of these with the um, rust fabric on the inside. Make sure that you're doing it like that as you're piecing them. And then another thing that might be helpful is to use um, a jeans needle. This is a 100-16 Class A. Um, these uh, worked very well in going through the fabric when there's lots of seams that you're sewing through. And for these disappearing blocks, you often are uh, sewing through um, a number of seams at once. So those are just a couple of helpful tips for you. Okay, so here is a complete block with four of the squares, and they're the disappearing squares that I put together. And I love how it turned out. It's just a, a beautiful block. Um, definitely press all of your seams open. I would recommend that. I started out by doing the quilter's way of pressing uh, the seam allowances to uh, one side and nesting, but that didn't work out as well. So then I adopted the garment sewer's seam allowance pressing uh, techniques and I pressed everything open. That definitely does help uh, for things to lie flat. You will want to use a jeans needle. Um, there is a lot of seam allowances that you're gonna be sewing through and go slow as you're sewing. You don't wanna be breaking needles and having them uh, pop out in your eyes. Um, be very careful. Sew over those uh, seam allowances carefully and slowly. And I definitely definitely recommend a jeans needle to accomplish that for this. When you get your muslin out of the um, salt water bath, definitely wash it and rinse it really, really well uh, so that you remove any leftover um, vinegar or anything that salt um, or baking soda, if that's what you use to neutralize your fabric, but make sure that you rinse it really, really well um, and then press them out uh, so that they're nice and flat so that you can cut your strips. And again, the fastest way to create strip sets is to cr cut one and a half inch width the fabric uh, from your fabrics and sew those five pieces together so that you've got a dark, um, the rusted fabric, a dark rusted fabric and a dark and, and then cut the size that you choose. I chose to cut five inch lengths and um, so I have a smaller square. Um, I wanted the finished um, block to have a smaller look. I didn't want it to be a great big uh, block or a design on it. So, um, but it, this is your project. Have fun with it. Um, do what you will on it. Now let's talk a little bit about yardage and how much yardage we're going to need for this project. So as I mentioned earlier, you might uh, want to just make a tote bag or a purse or a vest. And in that case, you're not going to need to create as much yardage for this project. I am going to create a kimono jacket and I am going to use the pattern that I found on the Happiest Camper 
uh, site, uh, happiestcamper.com. I, again, am going to have links below here so that you can find that and definitely check out her website, check out her YouTube tutorials, fabulous stuff out there. You'll really enjoy it. But since I'm going to use these, I went ahead and pieced them together. I downloaded them, uh, printed them, pieced them together. And um, the length of this, I did shorten it a little bit because I'm rather short. So I'm going to need at least 30 inches in length for both of these and 22 inches across on the fold. So here's what my plan is. I am going to make fabric that is uh, 44 inches wide by at least 60 inches long. So that's my goal. Now, when you look at patterns and they tell you maybe you need three yards of fabric for a kimono jacket, you've got it keep in mind that that is just normal fabric that you're going to um, lay your pattern on and cut it out and piece the jacket together. In our case, we are actually going to take the yardage and we're going to be uh, using up a lot of seam allowances in that uh, yardage. So we're going, to, I'm starting out with two yards of muslin, two yards of the plum color, and two yards of the gold. I have a total of six yards. It's way more than I'm going to need, but a lot of that yardage is actually going to be eaten up in seam allowances in each and every one of these blocks. So I just want to make sure that I do have enough fabric in order to accomplish that. If you make this very, very scrappy, then you can just keep grabbing scraps from your stash and creating strip sets using that and uh, you won't have to worry about actually pulling yardage. Um, but that's what I plan to do. I'm going to uh, make the fabric at least uh, 22 inches wide on then folded so they'd be 44 and then 60 inches long and then I will be able to cut out these two pattern pieces from that piece of fabric. So we have homework this week. We all have some homework. Number one, I need to finish uh, rust dyeing some more fabric because I don't have enough right now. So I'm going to continue that process. And you all will too if you plan to do the rust dyeing. And secondly, then once that's all done, I am going to get all of my strips cut out, create my strip sets, and make all of my blocks. I've chosen this particular design for my block. You can decide what you want. Go back to that area in my YouTube video where I show the different a variety of different ways you can create a block and choose one that you like and uh, maybe review it a couple of times and then go ahead and start uh, cutting out the strips and piecing them together and creating a beautiful block set for your fabric and I'm excited about it. So next week, probably next Thursday or Friday, I'll have another video. I'm going to have my blocks together. I hope that I'll have the yardage ready so that I can actually show you at that time how to put these pattern pieces on the yardage that you've created so that we can cut out our kimono jacket. And maybe we'll even get to the piecing of it together in that video. So have fun. I'm happy quilting with all of this. Have fun doing the rust dyeing. If you have any questions or any comments, please uh, make sure you comment below in the comment section. I love to hear from my viewers. Uh, let me know what you're going to be working on. If you would like to post, I'd love to have you post pictures in my Facebook, Quilting with Lori, or um, my Mystery Quilt, Quilting with Lori page on Facebook. Love to see what you're working on, anything quilting related, I'd love to see that. Um, so let's, uh, let's plan on meeting back next week. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you get the uh, videos as I post them. And I, I'm anxious to see what you're all working on. And I'm anxious to be able to get uh, the next part of this uh, kimono jacket ready to go so that we can have a beautiful quilted jacket using the disappearing block method and rusted dyed fabric. Happy quilting. Have a great week. We'll see you soon.